Yeah, I haven't really talked a lot about tools for depolarization or peacemaking. I mean, there are a lot of them out there. People are doing really beautiful work, various kinds of circle processes and um, truth and reconciliation committees and restorative justice circles and things like that. Um, I would say that as we inhabit the place of empathy, um, as we rehumanize the enemy, as we seek healing over identity and being right, then we recognize the best technologies and, and methods to achieve those ends. And we're able to develop them further. Uh, but I'm not an expert practitioner at any of the things that I, that I mentioned. If there's one technology I would just add to the list, it's humor. Humor is sometimes it's, it's the last resort. Sometimes it's the only way to establish that we're in this together because we're both laughing at this thing. Um, humor is a peace offering to somebody. It's offering, let's be on the same side for now. Like, let's, let's laugh together at something. When all else fails, then humor is the last resort. It's not even the last resort, it's the first resort and the last resort. If there is, if your action, your political action is humorless, then you've got some work to do. Then you could probably be a lot more effective and ask, and, and, and I'm not saying that it's not serious, you know, I mean, there, there are horrendous things happening. In Colombia and Brazil, like peace activists and environmental activists, they're getting killed. They're getting kidnapped and tortured. And the people doing that, how do you reach them? How do you touch their humanity? This is not an idle question. I think sometimes the only way is humor. Humor, to even offer, offer humor depend, requires that um, you see the other person as not entirely inhuman. And I'm not saying that, you know, the paramilitaries shouldn't be disarmed or confronted or like, I'm not saying that. I'm not offering this as uh, a substitute for other kinds of action. but as an essential tool. You know, if, if you have a bigger army than the paramilitaries, yeah, you can disarm them. You can imprison them. But do we have a bigger army than the totality of the perpetrating class on earth? Do we have a bigger army than the military industrial complex? We cannot overcome them by force. We need other tools. We have to spread the revolution to them, part of them, factions of them, and more importantly, within each of them, there has to be a rebellion. So that even if they decide to crack down on the revolution, their heart isn't in it. I just read this thing about the yellow vests in, in France, you know, where there was an encounter between the militarized police and the protesters. And, and the, one of the police said, you know, I have nothing against you guys. Um, I'm, my, I have family members sympathetic to the yellow vest, but I'm sworn to obey orders and to do my duty. And the yellow vest said, yeah, I've got nothing against you either. Yeah, you're one of us. And, and that 
in that moment, okay, maybe they continue to play out their play out their their roles that were prescribed by the situation. But you could imagine as that consciousness grows, that when push comes to shove, and the yellow vests ally with the communists and the immigrants and so on, and there's like a real popular uprising, you could see how those conversations generate a rebellion inside the uh, ruling class, inside the soldiers, inside the police, even inside some of the elites. That is the only way that a transformation of society can happen. I, I was going to use the word revolution, but that's kind of loaded. You know, revolution seems to involve violence and the overthrow and the you know making somebody the enemy, the bourgeoisie or something like that. I'm not. I'm not. So, so I actually would like to return to the original meaning of revolution, a turning, a turning. But maybe this turning is not a wheel but a spiral. So let's say that let's say the revolution. Um, it can only happen if everybody participates. The kind of revolution that we really want, everybody has to participate in some way or another. Even those who we see as the enemy, they have to relent somehow. Something has to touch their heart. They're not really in it. We have to be able to understand that you don't really want to do this. There's a deep part of you that wants what I want. I, maybe I don't know how to access that part of you, but I know it's there. And when I can actually see it, when I can put down the veil of my judgments that establish me as good and right, and you as bad and, and, and wicked, if I can put those down and I can actually see the part of you that wants what I want, then I can speak to that part of you. When I can speak to that part of you, I can invite it into expression and I can ally with it. And then I do not need more guns and more armies than the military industrial imperial complex. And it's a revolution of everybody and there's no enemies because I know you want it too.